From Texarkana, Arkansas, this is Midwest Sports Saturday. Good morning, I'm Joey McWilliams and I am pleased and privileged to get to be here on site at Arkansas High here in Texarkana. Not only that, but in studio with Razorback TV and alongside my broadcast partner, longtime broadcast partner, longtime friend, Michael Westbrook. And it is a great Saturday, first Saturday in December here in 2019. We have a big December, by the way, on Midwest Sports Saturday, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go on. But right now, here we are in Texarkana, and a little bit later on today, we get the privilege of broadcasting the seventh Live United Bowl, wow. Amazing, It's right? been that long. The seventh Live United Bowl, the Agent Barry Live United Bowl here on campus at Arkansas High, and it will feature Henderson State and Missouri Western. Michael, uh, as always, it's good to get to, to sit next to you and get to talk for a little while about sports and more, and I know we're going to get to uh, also get to see some of your folks here that not only work behind the scenes, they're working behind the scenes for us today, they work in front of the camera as well here for Razorback TV. So we have a, a big morning. Absolutely, yeah. We've recently started calling this Studio A. I don't know if it's because it's the first letter of the alphabet or for <laughs> Arkansas High. Uh, we're still looking for a sponsor on that, by the way. You know a thing or two about that. So if you want to sponsor our there studio, you, go. you can. But we are certainly glad to have you here today, Joey, and uh, to be a part of this. We do have some students out there working who will come in and be interviewed in a little bit. But seventh annual Live United Bowl, and uh, I was thinking back to that very first one when Great American Conference School Harding came in, bad weather, and took down Commerce 44-3. to Games have been a little closer since then, and I know we're going to get into all of that during the show. You know, that, that weather played so well, though, into a Harding offense. A traditional right. Harding offense, at least here, you know, in the, the, the 2000s, the 20-teens, we're almost in a new decade, by the way. Thank Just, you for reminding uh, yeah, me. Don't, don't let that stress you out or anything. But with that, that triple option, the, the run game, I mean, the weather back then worked perfectly for that game. It was so cold. It was so wet. And I am so glad that today is not like that. Yeah, of course, you know, it's December. So we've had kind of a coin toss every other year with the weather. And... Uh, I guess this is going to be two years in a row with good weather. It, it looks great outside. So well, we'll talk a little bit of uh, the Live United Bowl right now. And again, the teams that are playing today from the Great American Conference, Henderson State, the Reddies are representing the GAC today. They come in with a record of 9-2, and two, two very close losses. Missouri Western from the MIAA comes in 8-3 and three on the season. And again, the losses to quality teams as well. So uh, both of these teams, five combined losses, all to teams that are in the postseason. Yeah, I think when you get to bowl situation, you do talk about, okay, well, who did they lose to? Why are they in a bowl game instead of maybe in the NCAA postseason playoffs? And that's, that's a big part of how these teams get selected out of the Great American Conference. They take the top team that does not make the NCAA playoffs. A Henderson State team that lost two games by a combined <laughs> four points to two nationally ranked teams that both went on to the postseason. Uh, a one-point loss to Harding and a three-point loss to Washita on a play that basically sealed the deal at the very end of the game for the Tigers. And so a very good 9-2 and two Henderson State team. You look at the losses for Missouri Western. They lost two of their first three games, Joey, at the beginning of the year. Uh, Northwest Missouri was their opening opponent. Right. They're still playing today in the <laughs> exactly. NCAA Division II playoffs. That'll tell you how good they are. And their other loss early in that first part of the season to Central Missouri, that game went to overtime. Right. And so, you know, they, that tells you what kind of opponent they are as well. And Central Missouri went on to the playoffs as well. Central Missouri won its first 10 games, losing only to Northwest Missouri yeah. in its season finale, won a playoff game, lost the next one, and then the, the final loss for Henderson State against a very tough Nebraska Kearney team who is playing today as well. And the thing is about, uh, about Missouri Western today, they're more confident this year than they were last year when they were in this game. <laughs> because last year they came in at 6-5 and five and, and Coach Williamson had his team pretty confident then. But now all of a sudden 8-3, and three, they already won this game last year, so they're feeling pretty confident. And it's a team really, I, from listening to what they've said and, and looking at how they're coming in, to Texarkana, then uh, there, there's a familiarity now. Right. So they, it was it was wide open. It was something new last year. Now there's a familiarity to it, not just to the to the field, but for players coming in and and all the trappings that go on around a Division II bowl game like this. There, there's so much that happens uh, prior to the game itself that maybe not everyone gets a chance to see. 
because you, you know we're interested in football. We right. want to we want to see the game, but they come in and, and do things in the community as well. They absolutely do, and we're going to run uh, a segment on that at halftime of our broadcast later today on the GAC Sports Network is where the broadcast can be found. And uh, we'll be calling play-by-play -play of that for the seventh year in a row. But the familiarity, you guys, you got guys like Shamar Griffith who were in the game last year mm -hmm. who played well. And that's a guy that has 716 rushing yards this year on defense. A name that comes to mind is uh, Tyler Baska. I mean, he, he is an incredible player. He was in the game last year, made some big plays against Southern Arkansas. So, yeah, they're used to being here at this point. Um, not so familiar with Henderson State, but... Uh, Coach Williamson did tell us earlier in the week that his kids just love coming down here and getting involved in the community. And I got to see that firsthand yesterday right. as well. And the students out here with us today, they got to see that as well. So you do need to watch that. And again, the broadcast today will be with the GAC Sports Network. You can watch actually on YouTube as well. Follow, right. follow along with the Great American Conference and, and that will be a live broadcast. And, and so be looking for that at halftime because those, those spots are, are really nice to see and to get to, to talk about what the student athletes do outside of just you know the lines uh, outside the court whatever field of play you happen to be on at that point in time again I'm, I'm getting to visit with Michael Westbrook today who will be the play-by-play -play gentleman on the call for the Live United Bowl for gentleman, the seventh <laughs> yes I do know for the seventh consecutive year getting to to have that call well uh, from the MIAA, Missouri Western, comes in a very, very tough conference that's so well documented. It's, it's just the probably the toughest conference in Division II yeah. football. And again, year after year, we, we see that played out. Now, there may be a, a few people that might want to question that, but I think, that, think the numbers do back it up, especially, again, within the last couple of decades. Then from the GAC, Henderson State, now this is the first time for the Reddies to come to the GAC. You were saying not as familiar. You're familiar. Right, absolutely. With yeah. Henderson State. <laughs> I know being, a little bit about them. Being part of the, the Washita broadcast yeah. for a number of years now. Four years now? Four years. Four yeah. years yeah. now on the Washita Tiger football broadcast. And of course, there's this big game at the end of the year, <laughs> the, the Battle of the, what? what is that? Yeah, the Battle of the Ravine. Oh, Boy, yes, you Battle know, of the Ravine. You kind of wonder if, if Henderson's coming in on a little bit of a down note because of that game but of course they have had a couple of weeks now to recover and go through Thanksgiving break and take a few days off and maybe put that one behind them but the Battle of the Ravine let me tell you it is a sight to see now we're right here in Texarkana on the state line of Texas and Arkansas and there is a massive high school football game right. here every year as well the kids love being a part of that and I mean if you're going to be on the Texas side for that game you've got to park in some lady's house down the road and pay her ten dollars <laughs> to get a parking spot um Battle of the Ravine is really an awesome thing. The players walk across the street. Uh, this year there was the ESPN3 broadcast. It was Sports Illustrated was there. Everybody was there. And 24-21 uh, it, it, was the final. Washita wins on a last uh, second drive, a Brockton Brown one-yard touchdown run. And that sealed the deal. It sealed an undefeated season for Washita. They would lose in the opening round of the playoffs. And, and Henderson kind of thought, well, you know, we take our losses, but we're still going to be in the postseason. They are in the postseason. They wanted the playoffs, but right. I think because of that, he's got some pretty hungry seniors. Richard Stametti, quarterback. Um, some places have had him listed as a junior. I want to verify he is a senior. So he's a guy that is uh, you going heard to be – He's going to be trying to perform out there as well today and do his best to get his team a postseason – Bowl game win, they've not been in a bowl game since the 70s. So this is a big deal for them. And Stametti, the offense really does go through him. I mean, he was at the, the top of the NCAA Division II lists at the start of the season. Numbers kind of, uh, you know, yeah. drop a little bit as the season go on, goes on as defenses are able to prepare. But, I mean, in two seasons with Henderson State, Stametti has thrown for more than 5,000 yards. And to, to drop a, a name for Reddy's fans, these are Kevin Rogers That's type right. numbers through two seasons. They really are. And, um, you know, when you compare quarterbacks at Henderson State, you have to say Kevin Rogers' name. And he leads, goodness, almost the state in a lot of categories. Uh, but Richard Stametti has done a fantastic job this year. He's uh, 216 of 351. He's thrown 10 interceptions, but he's got 24 touchdowns, completing 62% of his passes. That is phenomenal. Yep. And, and it should be a very good day, day today, a good game today. The matchup looks good. Missouri Western, Henderson State, it is a noon kickoff central time here, so uh, be sure and watch that. And one other thing, I don't know about the running back situation right now for Henderson. That'll be something that we're going to have to look at today because 
Corel Hall, Logan Moraney, those two guys have been stars. But um, Moraney not on the depth chart. Darius Austin has his spot there. So Coach Maxfield told us there were some injuries. He didn't tell us who. Again, you don't see Moraney's name on the depth chart. Maybe he's not going to play. Don't know. But if he gets out there, uh, those two are two backs that are really, really tough to stop, Hall and Moraney. Should be a fun one. Again, GAC Sports Network. Be sure and watch this game live on YouTube as well. Michael Westbrook on the call. Now, we are on site and we are in studio here. Studio A. That's right. Easy to remember. Studio A here for Razorback TV. And I want to show you a little bit about what these young men and women do at Arkansas High with Razorback TV News. So let's take a look. Razorback TV covering the Arkansas High stories that matter. Under the instruction of Ms. Hubel, the students will use three Coke bottles. Student news told by students for students. Just being able to actually do it, making music, is pretty cool. Featuring you, the students, and of course, our teachers. I'm outside of the North Building where Arkansas High hosts many of its classes. Our student spotlight this week is freshman Callie Joe Brooks. Find us on YouTube and Facebook. This is Razorback TV News. And I've had a chance to watch some of these Razorback TV spots. Michael, you do a good job. They do a good job. It is a good program, and it's fun to watch. I really do enjoy it. They're superstars. They are superstars <laughs> on this campus, and I get a chance to brag on them. I'll tell you just briefly, I had a student earlier in the year. I was telling him, I said, hey, all the teachers are talking about Razorback TV, and they're talking about y'all and how great y'all are doing. He came back to me a couple days later and he said, you know, Mr. Westbrook, I got a theory. He said, I think you're the one out there talking about us and, and making sure that we get promoted. So that is part of my job to well, promote them and, and rightfully so. And they if have you such do, a that's great okay. Product. Yeah, if you yeah. do, that, that is all right. We'll get a chance to visit with three of the folks from Razorback TV here in just a moment. Uh, also football today, before we uh, go too far from the sports part of Midwest Sports Saturday, Football today, bowl games going on, and there are some other bowl games. Uh, Matchups look like this. The Heritage Bowl in Corsicana, Texas, uh, which is featuring Southern Arkansas and Eastern New Mexico. Uh, that's also going on today. The Mineral Water Bowl, Nebraska Kearney. We talked about Nebraska Kearney. The Lopers still playing in the postseason. They're playing today, and they're going to be taking on Winona State. And then a new bowl, and this one is in Indiana. It is the America's Crossroads Bowl, Truman State from the Great Lakes Valley Conference, taking on Ohio Dominican today. Uh, we had a chance to, to visit uh, with Coach Nesbitt from Truman State on the MidwestSports.net channel. Great visit with him, and they're looking forward to that, to that matchup as well today. A new bowl in Division II. So uh, looking at four bowl games across the country today in Division II, and not to mention all the four playoff games, too, because we're down to the quarterfinals in Division II. Eight teams left, and as we did mention, Northwest Missouri, the Bearcats, one of those teams. So uh, year in and year out, that is just a phenomenal program. 16 straight uh, playoff appearances. Right. 16 straight playoff appearances for Northwest Missouri. They take on Ferris State today. That's going to be a great game um, out of Super Region 3. Ferris State has been pretty phenomenal as well the last few years. So. Uh, looking forward to that. And, you know, hey, it wouldn't be a broadcast if we didn't do some quick math. You and I actually were earlier in the week. I saw some notes that <laughs> said maybe there were only three ball games. I said, I don't think that's right. I think we're up to four now. And so uh, it's great for Division Two to have four ball games. Yeah. And, and, you know, a couple of them here in this region. I like having the one in Indiana now. It starts right. to spread things out a little bit, maybe get a little more notoriety for Division II football, but I still like the fact that we have ours down here in this region, but uh, I think we can handle a couple of more in, in years to come. I think so too. And, and typically it seems like that these games wind up in the South yeah. because you're likely, and I say likely, yeah. likely to get better weather in that situation. I do like the bowl game in Indiana, number one. And number two, I've been here when the weather was, was <laughs> frightful. So it doesn't matter just, where you are. It, it doesn't matter where you are. A couple other games of note today that do need to be mentioned, and we've been talking NAI football on the MidwestSports.net channel all week long. Had a couple of, of great interviews. Got to interview uh, Coach Woodley from Grandview. Got to interview Coach Ryan from Morningside. Those two teams will meet today at noon in Sioux City, Iowa. Big, big semifinal matchup in the NAI, and the winner will go on to face the, the winner of Marion and Lindsey Wilson. That game taking place in Marion today. Is there's a week off before the national championship in Ruston, Louisiana. And so it's, it's tough to, to see. Morningside and Marion have seemed to be on a collision course. I'm not going to write either Grandview or Lindsey Wilson off. But it seems like those two have been on a collision course for the season. 
I think it's going to be a huge, huge game in Iowa today, and I, I think that's uh, that one's just going to be a fun one, Morningside and Grandview. I love it. I love that you know basically everything about everything, Joey. <laughs> the way you keep up with all of the coverage here throughout the Midwest um, from – Division one to NAIA and everything in between. And we try. Uh, I, I, I may have to keep up with that game a little bit today and see what's going on. Yeah, it's, and it's going on the same time as our game. And then, of course, another game that's going on the same time as our game is, is the Big 12 championship. Yeah, well, but that's, you know, I'll, I'll leave Division one to Division DVRs. one right now. They, yeah, that's right. They, they can should, find us first. They can find us first. One other thing, too, and this is a programming note, and I am very excited to officially announce this now. So you heard it here first Ooh. in Studio A. Uh, Razorback TV, that Midwest Sports Saturday will be broadcasting live from McKinney, Texas. Yes. Two weeks from today, the site of the Division II Football National Championship in McKinney, and uh, we're going to be down there for that. So it'll be streaming live at 11 a.m. Central Time. We have some good guests already lined up, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. It would be neat to see one of our Midwest teams then playing in that championship game. And the only one left within our six-state region is Northwest Missouri. So sure. you, you have to say go Bearcats. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess we're rooting for them then at this point. <laughs> and, you know, Fair State, they're up pretty north there. So, yeah. Uh, not quite in your region, but there is one other Texas school that is true. who would like to be and there in Texas in McKinney, and that's Texas A&M uh -huh. Commerce. But uh, they take on a very tough Minnesota State team today, so I don't know how that will go for them. They've kind of already won a couple of road games maybe they weren't supposed to win. So We, uh, we bleed over into Texas yeah. some with the coverage of the Lone Star Conference. You know, so uh, I, I had a chance to be there and get to visit with Commissioner Perner this summer for the media days and uh, got to talk some commerce football there. So, yes, that would be a really neat thing as well. So that's, but that is uh, great. That's that. uh, you're going to have to have your son that come out and help you, right? Or somebody's My son will be, be there, there as well. You. My so. son will be there with me as well, and I'm so incredibly excited about that. So uh, shout out to, to Joseph this morning watching back in Oklahoma. All right, well, listen, we've talked some football. Let's talk a little Razorback TV because when we go on the road with Midwest Sports Saturday, it is important to, to, to me and, and part of our mission here to get to promote on the campus where we are, wherever we happen to be. And uh, we, we've been now in uh, not just Oklahoma and Arkansas, we've made the trip into Kansas now, looking to be in Missouri a little bit later on. And of course, Nebraska and Iowa as well. And, and obviously we're going to be down in Texas here in a couple of weeks. So the, the show really is, it's growing and it's uh, getting out on the road. Now uh, with us, uh, and I, I believe we're going to expand this shot here go. a little bit to bring in Gracie. Yeah, can, can be a little, yeah come in a little bit closer. That's all yeah. right. That's all right. Gracie Pendergraft. We're in a higher chair. Sorry. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyone stand up? I don't know. <laughs> that's all right. Michael was tall to begin with. I like the chairs because it it uh, eliminates some of the height differential when Michael and I stand next to one another. But it doesn't fix the hair issue. No, you know, it most so. certainly does not. That's all right. We'll we'll live with that. This is Gracie Pendergraft. Yes. She is our executive producer of Razorback TV. She's one of the main four anchors that we have on the show. She edits, she shoots films or whatever, she does it all. So there you go. I'm going to let you handle the interview. That's, that's all right, Gracie. And I, I do, you know, definitely point out some of those things that, that you do. I mean, that is a full plate. There is a lot going on. And this, this show, I mean, you have weekly shows and monthly shows, so you have a lot on your plate. Talk about what you do. Yes, sir. We do have a lot on our plate that we do here at Raise Your Back TV. We have our weekly show that we attempt to do every week, and we're very successful with that. And our school watches it every Friday ish, yeah. yeah. And that's where we talk about things that are going on on our campus and things that have gone on off of our campus too. And we show how our students are involved. And then we also do a monthly show where we go into more in-depth stories and longer stories. And it's really cool to see how our students here at Razorback TV collaborate with that. And they put in all their time and all their effort to make wonderful shows. Well, you do, and, and I can attest to that because I really have watched the shows. I'm not just saying that just because we're here and, and talking about it. I really have, have watched the shows, and yes, Mr. Westbrook does send the shows, too. If and if he doesn't if respond soon <laughs> enough, I say, hey, have, have y'all watched this yet? <laughs> but I also, I also subscribe to the YouTube channel, to the Razorback TV YouTube channel, so I, you know, I can watch them there, too, if, if I didn't already have a link. But I do. You all do a great job. Uh, you know, the weekly TV show, more news, the, the monthly TV show, a bit of a video magazine, if you will. I, that's that's yes, the sir. idea that I got from that. What's your favorite thing? 
My favorite thing is the weekly show. I love it. Well, that's where I get to anchor, so of course it's my favorite. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. I love, I love just the whole news aspect of it because it's something that you don't, not every school has a news team. And it's really, I just think it makes our school really special and different from the rest when we have our own news team and it's good for our students to get to see, hey, look, there's students that actually do this and I wish I could do that. And it's just, it's very unique and I just, I love the whole aspect of it, it's cool. That is really a, a neat perspective too, to be able to do something to where someone else can say, yes, I, I could be a part of that someday and, and encourage them to do that. Yes, Mr. Westbrook does a great job recruiting students. Like, this is my first year and I'm a senior, and I really wish I would have gotten into it earlier because it's so, I could learn so much more, but I feel like I've learned a whole lot just being here for a few months. What we did do is we found a way to get her in two class periods during the day. So <laughs> we, at least, we at least got that figured out. So, yes. But, yeah, the other two that you're going to talk to in a minute as well, these three, and there's, there's several others, but these three really, when it comes to, hey, we need this filmed, can you go do this? They are the first to volunteer make a decision to go get it done and find a way to make it work. All right, well, Gracie, I, I seriously, you do a great job. I enjoy watching you, I enjoy listening to you, and, and you guys do a fantastic job, and especially in such a way that, that other people could go, this is something I want to be a part of. Well, thank you so much, we really appreciate that. Who are we talking uh, to yeah, next? Who, who do we have next? We have Evan, some more students in. coming in. Yeah. And, and uh, Gracie, so, thank you very much. I'll tell you a little bit more. So Gracie is the red line captain. Of course, I know your your wife and your daughters are big into dance and everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, that there's you know she does a lot of uh, uh, dance, and she is also the Nike president, which is a club for girls here on campus. And we're going to talk more about all the things Addison's involved in in a minute. But Evan is a superstar in uh, the theater program as well. He is our main news reporter so he's out covering the big stories uh, throughout the week throughout the month and have i left anything else out i know you're involved in other things too and he's very successful oh you're crossing your t's and you're dotting your eyes <laughs> on me that's basically all i've got but uh <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a lot pretty heavily involved in theater uh pretty heavily involved in razorback tv and you know like uh, gracie out there uh this is my first year being in razorback tv i was a little involved last year but not nearly as heavily or as prevalent as I am now. But I feel like, you know, just like Gracie said, uh, I've learned a lot in the short time I've been involved. Because, you know, Mr. Westbrook, you know, he's a great instructor. He's taught us a lot. You know, me being tech director and all that, you know, it's just been a process of picking it up. It's like a learning curve. And it's just, you know, taking it and executing it. And it's just, it's an awesome feeling. He runs replay at our football games, too. I knew there was well, something else out there. Yeah, that, there it is. Yep. Well, hey, listen, first off, again, you all do a great job. I Thank have you. watched you. I've seen you guys do a good job. And, and the, the spots that you all do, you know, going out in the field, getting those stories taken care of in, in the field like that, those are cool. Theater is also, not just the dance, but theater is also big in my household as yeah, well. Yeah, that's we're, true. We're yeah. a, a big... You know, with as much sports as I do, you would think there wouldn't be time for all the dance and all the theater and musical theater. I have a daughter just graduated from Oklahoma City University who has been performing uh, at literally throughout the country in Florida, New Hampshire, yeah. uh, back in Oklahoma, doing the Polar Express now. So I and, was going to ask wow. you yeah. about that. I, I saw that that looked pretty, yeah. like a pretty cool so thing. That's, yeah, so you can take these things and go so many places with them. And I know Mr. Westbrook is really... Uh, putting you on a position to succeed. He does He does well at that. What is your favorite spot of all this? Uh, I think in just being involved with both, like you said, it is a learning process. Um, you can take all these skills that I've been learning, or I can take these skills I've been learning, and I can just apply them in multiple areas, you know, from the simple acting aspect of where I just get in front of a camera, I smile, and I, I talk about, you know, what needs to be explained to the audience. It's building that confidence. I think my favorite part is being able to be so confident on camera, it just feels like I'm talking to a person in front of me. Right. It doesn't feel like I'm, I'm talking to a camera. It doesn't feel like I'm talking to a group of people. It just feels like I'm having a mono on mono conversation with somebody. And it's just a great feeling to me. Well, it sounds good. You're doing it well. <laughs> yeah. You are absolutely doing it well. Evan, thank you so much for for being with us today and thank you for what you've already been doing behind the scenes because not only are all three of these folks, you can see Addison coming in just a moment, uh, sitting in now, they're actually taking care of the broadcast today as well, yeah. so thank you. I'm going to get him a bigger chair, sorry about that. No. It doesn't help. Yeah, Addison, sure come on too. in here. 
next time. We'll, we will be back in studio. The other great thing about this group, Joey, is that they, they take some hard critiques from me sometimes. It doesn't matter if I tell them, you know, hey, you did it well, or there have been days where I've just had to say, no, you just have to got to start over. we got to blank sheet this, take it from scratch, redo it, and they're willing to do that and do it well. And uh, Addison's got some pretty good bloopers. Of He likes to comment back and forth to me on the microphone from time <laughs> to time during the bloopers. So, But he, he takes the – they all take the critiques well. They make sure it's right. They make it look good. And Addison Cummings, a little bit about him. Um, let's see. I maybe get all this right. Currently number one in the senior class right now with his grade point average. Got that going on for him. Heavily involved in Stuco, student council. He's an officer there. Um, I could, you could name almost any club on campus. He's involved in it somehow, and I think we should leave it at that for now. Yeah, I feel like we might be here a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, listen, you, just, you call him like you see him. That is yep. cool. And he also handles our teacher spotlight interview every week, so he gets to talk to the adults every week. Well, that's fun because, you, you I, seriously, I, I know you want to promote the teachers in a good light. And if you can do that, because these teachers give a lot. And, and like Mr. Westbrook, I spent some time in the classroom. I just feel like I should be called uh, Michael right now, though. I, it's no. so strange. Anyway. Okay. I'll call <laughs> you, I'll here, call you, I'll, I'll call you, I'll call you Michael <laughs> on the broadcast here in a moment. <laughs> when we're doing the Live United Bowl. Yeah. But for, for right now, as far okay. as Addison's concerned, Mr. Westbrook does a fantastic job. Yes, he does. And, uh, you know, what got you into to doing this? So last year, this is a very interesting story. Um, the person, I'm in a club called Interact, and so the sponsor, her name is Tanya Dumphy, she texted me and she said, hey, I have a question for you. I said, what? She said, Mr. there's a teacher named Mr. Westbrook, and he doesn't have very many students to help him run the football games, the Jumbotron. Would you be interested in doing that? I said, sure. And so I went and did it the first time, and then I enjoyed it, so I came back and then got in his class this year. Gracie mentioned that I'm a good recruiter. I don't know about that. But um, Sounds like when it. somebody who's not in your class comes to volunteer at an event, right. that's, that's somebody you want in your class. That's exactly so right. So that, that said a lot about Addison. So, okay, I've asked everyone else, what, what is your favorite part of doing all these things? So I honestly think it's like the people that we meet. So, I mean, you get to meet all these teachers on campus you might not have during their classes, or you get to meet new students and see the interesting aspects of them. And even the people like that we work with, like the news team, the anchors, the weathermen, the sportsmen, you just get to meet new people you might not meet on the, your daily life. And it's just, it creates friendships that I believe will last. That's a very good point. That is true. I mean, yeah. because you get to you know, get a feel for all these different places. They're in the trenches together here, so. <laughs> that is the truth. <laughs> Well, uh, congratulations and, and for being a part and, and to, to Gracie and to Evan as well for being a part of what is a successful program, an award-winning program too. So can, can we give him a moment to talk about our student television network trip sure. and what we have hopefully coming up there in March? Sure, promote. So in March, we plan on going to Washington, D.C. for the STN convention. And so what we're doing is December 21st is we're having a fundraiser. It is going to be a live stream for six hours. We're all going to be here. There will be jokes. There will be competitions. <laughs> there will be many things. Few so serious tune in to see. Yes, a few serious moments. And probably some jokes that may have been unintended at the time, too. Maybe. Because yes. live streaming for six hours. <laughs> and then we will also take donations during that time because we are trying to make it to Washington, D.C. So. Yeah, we're taking, you know. yeah, we're looking for advertisers, things of that nature. So uh, noon to 6, December 21st, we're going to be right here in the studio on live for six hours straight. All right, we're going to promote that as well then on the MidwestSports.net channel. So they can find you. Will, you. will you be live streaming on your YouTube channel? Facebook and YouTube at Facebook the same time. Facebook and YouTube yep. at the same time. All right. All right, Addison, thank you very thank much, you. man. We appreciate that. And we're going to start wrapping things up here then from Razorback TV Studios and from Texarkana, at least for our Midwest Sports Saturday broadcast because Michael and I have to head across campus here in just a moment yeah. and get ready for the Agent Barry. Live United Bowl, the, the Henderson State Missouri Western game, which is coming up again, noon kickoff. And, and Michael, as we wrap things up here, I, I want to give you a chance then to uh, also just tell people this, this is, it's a, it's a lot going on. You have more than just the three students. And by the way, thank you very yeah. much to those three students for coming in and, and being a part of what. See, you were Michael again there. There you go. Thank there you. There you go. Uh, <laughs> I just want to make sure on the broadcast later today, you know, you didn't drop in a mister. Uh, I may, just because. Um, anyway, we, that's how we do it. That's how we fight on. Um, but but it, we, you have a lot going on. You really do, and, and it's, it's a big deal. It's a big group of, of, of students, um, and, and you all are award-winning. I mean, this is a group that's, that's been winning awards not only in the state of Arkansas, some national awards as well. 
It is a good presentation here, and we really are honored to get to be here at, at Arkansas High. Well, thank you. Yeah, we, um, we're hoping again this year that our monthly show will win at least the Broadcast Excellence Award for the region. Uh, we won that last year, and that was a pretty big deal for us. We had some students go on through another organization and win a couple of state competitions, finish in the top 10 nationally um, in audio production of all things, not, not TV, not the TV side of it. So we got that aspect of it too. Um, and you know, I don't know if anybody really knows or cares, but we do all this in about 50 minutes a day. So the students are only in my class for 50 minutes. By the time they get down here and leave a little bit early, you know, we're probably looking at about 45 minutes of class time every day. So what they do before and after school and during lunch and all those times to make sure it works, I think um, it's crucial. They're learning deadlines because <laughs> that's a lot of life, right? So uh, that's going to benefit them down the road. But I love hearing about the teamwork and the friendship um, and, you know, possibly majoring in this in college and who knows, making a career out of it one day. Um, so. Yeah, we're doing a lot of cool things here. Thank you for the compliments. Um, we still got a ways to go, and I guess that's the coach aspect in me of wanting to make sure we just continue to improve and get better. And the school has been very um, beneficial, and they have been very open to ideas. We have what's called the TASD Montage Project, and they have uh, put a lot of money into the program for us to make sure that we have what we need, and so we're very grateful for that as well. Well, they, they do a lot, news uh, and are just benefiting the the entirety of the school as well not to mention what they do for Arkansas High Sports and you know running the Jumbotron and I know that some of the students in your program will be across the way over yeah. at the field today and helping with the broadcast there as well so yep working with uh, JBM production so we're looking forward to getting them that opportunity as well there you go something to I have uh, a feeling we talked more about me in this program than we did football or Midwest today well, but no <laughs> hey we this this we are in Arkansas and that is a part of our coverage so uh, that that's what we do here and, and I'm glad to get to promote that so we're promoting Razorback TV again thanks to Evan Burton thanks to Gracie Pendergraft thanks to Addison Cummings for not only being with us on the program but also to the work behind the scenes. Of course, my longtime friend and broadcast partner, Michael Westbrook, we're going to head over to the Live United Bowl in just a moment. want to say also, please be sure and tune in next week. Midwest Sports Saturday will be in Bethany, Oklahoma, and we will be at Southern Nazarene University for uh, in, in a pregame, or, or do our show as pregame coverage, uh, getting ready for a doubleheader between Southern Nazarene hosting Southeastern Oklahoma. This will also uh, be a doubleheader that is broadcast live on ESPN3. It's part of the Division II Showcase. And this probably, you know, may have been set to, to match two good men's teams. This is actually going to be a very good doubleheader for both the women's teams and the men's teams. They're coming in, winning records all the way around, and it should be two very good games. Southeastern Oklahoma at Southern Nazarene on December 14th. And again, we'll be live with uh, Midwest Sports Saturday. And then please don't forget, two weeks from today, December 21st, we will be on site in McKinney, Texas, at the site of the Division II Football Championship. Awesome. That is really cool. It is. Basketball it is. season is here, and uh, there's a lot of games going on today that we got to keep up with as well as we start looking ahead into in 2020. But uh, a couple more weeks of football. I'll be tuned into that show in a couple of weeks. All right. I want to say thank you very much again to Razorback TV, and thank you for watching. I really appreciate that. It means a lot. It helps our channel grow. Uh, please be sure and like and share this video, and please subscribe to the channel. Midwest Sports Net. For all those folks I just mentioned, shout out to Joseph uh, back at home. He's going to be with me in a couple weeks as well. And, and to all the folks watching there, I'm Joey McWilliams. Thanks again. God bless you. Have a great day.